Well, hi guys, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio, and I'm finding a very interesting thing happening here, and, and it, it seems to be a pattern. And so off to my right, I wanted to show you a video that I was watching that is kind of incredible. So let's see what it has to say. Get a handle on the hundreds of trashed RVs that are just showing up on city streets many with homeless people living inside. City leaders say the problem is actually an epidemic. Our Lisa Balick is live at Lentz Park. So Lisa, you got some answers today from City Hall. Yes, and I found out there's actually an unwritten city policy not to tow any of those RVs where people are actually living inside them. Even though city law clearly says you cannot park an RV overnight on city streets like this sign by the park says. But all this may be about to change. And it got to be that it was just scary to come down the street. We'd have to actually cross the street, walk over there, and then come this way. Nora Visser doesn't like what she's seeing. RVs lived in by homeless people back on her southeast Portland street. This was a major, major problem over here. Uh, like what I was over there? Uh, it was a, it was a small trailer. And then there was a big uh, section of tents on the sidewalk. The entire, entire sidewalk was, has, was blocked off. She tells me neighborhood organizers helped get the city to move them out and clean up the area. But now, the no parking signs they put up have been ripped down. Campers coming back. We found block after block, from North Portland to St. John's to Southeast, filled with dozens of trashed RVs, permanently parked on city streets. Many are just shells, metal pulled out, garbage piled up inside and out, many showing signs of people sleeping inside. Parking an RV on a city street overnight is against the law. Many have a tow sticker already on them, but the city's abandoned vehicle office tells me they get almost a thousand calls a week to remove them, and there's no place to store the RVs. We are overwhelmed with them. I asked City Commissioner Dan Salzman, head of the Transportation Bureau, if it's true the city won't tow if someone's living inside. He says that's the unwritten policy, for now, and it may be about to change. And I think the council may be willing to revisit the question of whether uh, we will tow uh, RVs, abandoned RVs, or RVs with people living them. When we approach these RVs where there's egregious signs of human waste, drug paraphernalia, and we tell the residents they have to get out of this RV because it is going to be towed. The commissioner tells me that change could happen within a month. Now, if you feel very strongly about this, contact your city commissioner and also see if you can get some of these signs just installed today alongside Lens Park up in your neighborhood. Live in Southeast Portland, Lisa Balick, Coin 6 News. So that's truly amazing. And, and it's not just Portland that's having this problem. Um, it's, it's uh, in fact, here's a, another video that I just saw the other wow, day. Wow, I spent $75 and, uh, on ads and made back to, uh, $357 <laughs> in a few To the commercials, commercials here, but here, there we go. This Since guy I've here. been here in Los Angeles, I've seen so many different types of homeless situation. And there's one that I have not spoken about yet. This is the motorhome homeless. As you see this motorhome behind me, looks like it's been sitting for quite a while. This is Venice Boulevard right here in Los Angeles. You see this motor, you see this motor home, you see that motor home, you see this motor home, you see this motor home, you see this motor home, and as I walk down Venice Boulevard, there's more, there's more of them down that way. As I walk down Venice Boulevard, you're going to see sporadic motor homes. So um, I'm going to stop that particular one there uh, due to the fact that it's like it's kind of a long video. But um, this is kind of what um, is kind of giving uh, RVers a bad rap because uh, later you'll find out that this particular strip or road isn't uh, uh, marked. So not only is there uh, people parking there just to live and a lot of those RVs don't even run um, 
uh, nomads are coming in there too and also staying. So I found that kind of interesting. Um, uh, and in fact, I got another video here to check out here. We thought maybe you know, I haven't low income housing yet. is not only beginning to be a real problem in the United States, but everyone is starting to see symptoms of it. And Los Angeles is a prime example of that. Now, homelessness has gotten so bad in the U.S. that we are seeing more and more RVs or mobile homes popping up on streets. And as a result, uh, businesses and residents are calling tow companies or the city to have these uh, RVs impounded because they're taking up a lot of space and in a lot of cases they're not in great condition. Now according to the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, 2,363 people across the city live in motor homes. That's a 20% increase from 2016. And to make the problem worse, the city had contracts with three towing companies that specialized in impounding um, large or heavy vehicles. And in this case, uh, it turns out the two of them have decided to stop doing business uh, with the city because of how terrible uh, these RVs are and, and how terrible the condition of these RVs are. So the contractors say that the campers and RVs are often so dilapidated or damaged that they're in danger of falling apart while being towed. The vehicles frequently contain overflowing or leaking sewer tanks and can come with pests such as fleas, ticks, mice, and rats. Now, the right. only company that's still impounding these uh, RVs uh, is Pepe's Towing, and they said that the conditions of these RVs are so bad that they've had to uh, basically bomb for fleas every Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get much worse. So you have RV encampments, uh, and then you also have the tent encampments, which used to be, um, you know, unique to Skid Row, but they're also popping up uh, throughout Los Angeles in areas that you hadn't seen them before. Also, the city of Los Angeles impounded approximately 1,000 motorhomes and trailers in 2016, but only about half of them were claimed. People uh, who are living in their RVs usually don't have the resources to go pay to uh, get them out of uh, the impound lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, these companies are like, why are we gonna impound these vehicles if we're not gonna be able to recoup the costs? So I wish somebody had warned me about the housing problem in LA. Look, I'm bringing this up because it's gonna continue to become more and more of a problem, right? So for those of you who are lucky enough to afford rent, or afford uh, buying a property, um, consider the fact that even if you live in the nicest neighborhoods, all of a sudden you're gonna start noticing you know, an ever-growing homeless population. And I say that as someone who you know, grew up in the San Fernando Valley, very rare to see homeless people uh, in the valley. It's a suburban area of Los Angeles. And now all of a sudden you see homeless people sleeping on the sidewalks pretty much you know, everywhere, every single part of the, the San Fernando Valley. Same of really nice places like West Hollywood. West Pol Hollywood used to have some homeless people. Now there's a ton of homeless people and it's gonna continue getting worse. And just to show you how big of a problem this is, not just in Los Angeles, but nationwide, um, there was a study done to look at uh, the lack of affordable housing in the US. This was done by the National Low Income Housing Coalition. And the reports have shown that the minimum housing wage is rising year over year. The organization defines a housing wage as a full-time earnings per hour needed to rent, rent, not buy, an affordable home. Uh, this year, they found that the national housing wage is $21.21 per hour for a two-bedroom rental home, nearly three times higher than the federal minimum wage, which is $7.25 per hour. And so a lot of times people will say, well, if you're living in a big city and it's expensive, just move to a city that's not expensive, where, where housing is a lot cheaper. But that means that you not only have to relocate to find a home, you also need to find a new job. And oftentimes the jobs in those areas don't even pay enough for you to afford the housing there. So again, this is continuing to be more and more of a problem. No one's really coming up with solutions and anyone who has the audacity to bring up the issue uh, gets brushed aside as someone who's just whining and spoiled. Yeah, I don't think those folks in the RVs are spoiled. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you talk about the fleas, et cetera, that the whole point there is uh, look at the dire straits that they're in. And so things have gotten bad for a lot of folks. And it's a combination of factors. It's not just that housing is expensive, it's all the, also that we don't make nearly enough money. The median wages have flatlined in this country mm -hmm. for decade after decade. 
By the way, productivity has not. And so the difference is about $12 trillion between productivity and wages. And that went, that got redistributed to the top. And so now there are consequences to that. And I guess some folks are thrilled, like I bought off a politician and I got lower taxes. And now I have a larger mansion. But when your mansion is surrounded by RVs of people who are in dire straits, because they're making minimum wage, that's still $7.25. That's unbelievable in LA, that's higher. but. And that's the nationwide one, and it is that is miserably low. It has not kept up with inflation or productivity or any of those factors. Then this is what happens, and then you're beginning to get two different Americas. Mm -hmm. And we, I know, we already have a two justice, two tier justice system, and now now we have this. So even if you don't care about anybody else and you have no empathy for them, it's going to affect you too. It will absolutely help us. So. I I, I bring this up and I know um, some people go, well, this is how people choose to live and this is how things are. And and it's like, for example, these guys too, it's like, who's going to talk about this stuff? Um, it's causing, I mean, one way we have several problems like, okay, we got a great economy. Why is this increasing? And now uh, considering that, you know, we focus on the subject of RV talk. Uh, this is becoming an issue that is causing issues with regular RVers, of uh, especially quick boondocking or overnight stuff. Uh, uh, is some of this spreading into like the Walmarts and all the other places we use for overnight traveling and stuff? How is this affecting all of us? And it's like, where are these guys getting these RVs? <laughs> How are they getting them there in the first place? Uh, it's a lot of questions I have like, okay, so we got all these old RVs out there. Where are these guys getting them and where are they buying them? And how, if they don't run, how are they getting them to the spot in the first place? Uh, it just, I find this subject amazing and, and interesting to talk about. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, that was Portland. Um, uh, it's a uh, rise of uh, RV homelessness seen throughout South Bay. Um, gosh, homeless groups, uh, Sioux City over RV parking restrictions. Um, RV living Q&A, homeless, unemployed, uh, fake home nomads. Oh, that's <laughs> Get old light screw. So yeah, it's, a, uh, it's just a lot of amazing subjects here. And uh, high uh, high rents is probably the biggest thing, and so that kind of explains why, you know, uh, so many younger people are moving into RVs, not just the this kind of uh, lifestyle, um, but because young people like programmers stuff to go to Seattle, let's say, <clears throat> and an average house is like well over four hundred thousand uh, dollars. The closer you try to live in the city, the crazier it gets, and. Uh, uh, so they're finding that, okay, I can buy a, a really nice RV for 50,000, uh, 75,000 with all the amenities of a house and being up to date with new stuff and live much more affordably in that. And it's like, so some of this, our, our economy, my, our, our regions are, are, are causing this. And of course, this guy brought up the fact that even if you go to a smaller town, well, the smaller wage is there, which means less jobs too, which means even the smaller wages there can't conform to what rents are even in smaller towns. So, you know, I mean, once again, it comes down to is what's causing this? Is it <clears throat> uh, a lot of people on welfare or disabilities, or is it people are just not going to work or getting skills, or they have skills and they haven't been able to apply them? And these are things that you know people should talk about, and and, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it. And uh, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, here's another one. Let's see what this one's about. <clears throat> Watch NBC Universal's coverage of the Winter Olympics live with YouTube TV. It's a crackdown on people living in RVs parked along El Camino Real near Stanford. KPI X5's Devin Feely live in Palo Alto with the people who say they're tired of getting chased off. Devin? 
Yeah, the city of Palo Alto estimates that there are roughly about four dozen, about 50 RVs that routinely park here along El Camino, and the city is planning to do something about it. From, here, from Sky Zone 5, the scope of the problem is clear. RVs stretching as far as the eye can see down El Camino Real. My normal routine for, for taking a shower are using, using a handful of these, the wipe it. But it's from the ground that the human side and the unique challenge of the city's crackdown can best be appreciated. I've been a few places and then just about everywhere you go you get chased off. This is Frank Daniel Aldama. One of dozens of people living in RVs on El Camino. Look at all those Over RVs. a decade ago, Frank says a divorce sent him into a downward spiral of drugs and despair. And when he finally got clean and sober four years ago, his family bought him this RV so he would have a roof, however modest and movable, over his head. It's very uncertain, full of anxiety. Um, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, if I had a way out, I'd take it. I, I, in a heartbeat. But Palo Alto is planning to crack down on people just like Frank. Anyone, basically, who parks longer than 72 hours on El Camino could end up ticketed or towed. All we're saying we're doing is enforcing an ordinance that requires somebody to move their vehicles. It doesn't mean that they need to completely move. I mean, we certainly understand that this is ultimately an issue uh, about people, not about vehicles. The police department is partnering with social workers to see if they can help the people living in those RVs before displacing them. If we go out and give people information about what the law actually says and explain the consequences of what could happen if they disregard the law, then we fully expect to gain compliance. But many living in those RVs say the crackdown feels capricious, an attack on people without much in the way of money or options. I had somewhere to go, I'd go. Now, technically, the city law says that no one can park on the street in the same spot for longer than 72 hours without moving that vehicle a half a mile. So could some of these people just move up or back down the road a half a mile every couple of days? Certainly. But clearly, the city is hoping that the crackdown will have a deterrent effect. In Palo Alto, Devin Feely, KPIX5. So that's uh, one of the things I, uh, on this show, I think what I'd like to see is a debate uh, or, or comments and, and not of hate and all that stuff, but what are some of the solutions to help this situation? What's causing it? Is there anything that the average person can do to uh, uh, help reduce all this stuff? Uh, what are your concerns? I mean, as an RVer, does this uh, concern you at all about uh, how it could affect you um, as far as going to RV parks and going to cities and having your RV? Is it a, uh, causing issues with the average, what they call stereotype uh, RVer? And of course, you know, uh, everybody wants to talk about the happy side of everything. And I understand that, but someone and, and people should talk about this too and even the rv industry is is there uh, uh, ways to uh, maybe help accommodate these people and uh, you know is there cities that own a lot of property to sit in there uh, can it be developed enough to maybe have uh, a place where people can park these things and maybe actually have hookups um, that would be something that'd be kind of interesting to, to hear and talk about and hear what the cities are, are doing about that. So uh, I know with us, we'll continue to research this and hopefully uh, run into people with solutions, not just like, I know with us, it sounds like we're just complaining and being complicit or whatever. And uh, what we're trying to do is cause a discussion and solutions and ideas. So I'd love to hear it from you. So. I'm going to leave it at that. I, I just wanted to show some of these reports and kind of give uh, people an idea of what's going on out there. And uh, anyway, so please leave comments and constructive feedback and ideas uh, and concerns that you would have about this subject of homeless RVing. So I'm Rob Scrimner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Hey, thanks for listening and watching RV Talk Radio. We appreciate your comments and feedback. Please take the time to like and subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We appreciate it. And